Right well, guys, welcome back to another vid. This one is going to be all about the new tray and canopy package I've got on the 200. So, start of the year or a few months ago, I ducked up to Cairns, which I'll show you a bit of footage of. And uh, the boys at Norweld uh, helped me out. We took the old package off and we run this new system. So, this is the new Elite tray and canopy package from Norweld. I'll walk you through a few differences on the way around, but biggest one being now that I can take the canopy off the tray base and run around in this 200 as a ute. So, I've never been able to do that before. It's always been a full-time package where the canopy floor is part of the tray base and it all goes on and off as one piece now they're two separate items and I can take them off I'll show you that throughout the vid but I'll give you a quick walk around the outside then I'll show you the inside and where I pack everything so I'll I've got everything packed in there. I'll be able to show you where I put it, what I take, and what makes it easier for me when I go on trips, solo trips, camping stuff, towing the van, that sort of thing. So anyway, let's go. So the Elite tray has a fair few different changes, but the biggest one that you'll notice visually is that there's no checker plate and rope rails anymore. So you can custom color code these side panels to um, whatever color your rig is or whatever you want to do. I like it. Start on this side and I'll walk you around. So we've kept the um, the Bush Company tent on top, that swaps over, straight swap, no dramas. Because it's a jack off canopy now, you've got a headboard for when you're running as a ute, and then your canopy bolts up against that. Now this is one of the new changes of the, of the Elite tray is that Norwell have their own extrusion where it's rounded on the front, round profile, and then flat on the back, which enables you to mount your canopy hard up against that headboard. Looks good, saves space. Um, and it's unique to Norweld, I really like it. Um, and then when you take it off, your uh, sideboards just clip onto these little panels and onto the, the stainless hinges on the, on the side there. All right, swing down. I've kept the color the same, so the graphite the same as the 200. Uh, a bit of a difference with this one, you can now get infill panels. So mine's a 650 mil extension, so it will be different for every car, but there you can get an infill panel to cover that in. Uh, I think if you've got a 750 mil, you can actually get another toolbox in there, but I've got enough storage, I don't need any more. And then um, underneath there is a water tank, and on either side I have a tap, just gravity fed like that, and you can reverse fill them through there, or you can fill it, there is a filler on the headboard here, and a breather as well, so there you go. Mud guards are the same, they're removable, uh, changeable, so if you have a dingham or whatnot, you can just unbolt them from underneath the tray base and replace those. And then the toolboxes on the back, same size as the old one, but they've changed um, a few things, as in the hinges, they now have torsional hinges, so they're still lockable, waterproof and all that, but see this, they're torsional hinge, so they will stop at any spot on your way down. In this one, I keep um, electrical lead, my tire changing gear, and uh, my tire deflator as well. Just a little bit of rope and stuff, but they, I use these boxes just as sort of everything, like chuck everything in boxes or dirty gear, but I always keep this one as my tire changing stuff so I know where it is if I ever need to change a flat. Shut those up, I like that, good hinge, eh? And then you close that, they're lockable as well. And then compression latches, so you're never gonna get dust or water and stuff in them. Now, you've still got the spare on the back, and you've also got, on um, this one, I've got the jerry can mounted on this side, which is also optional. You can pull this jerry can holder off, put another threaded rod in and run two spares if you want. See, if you're going on a big trip, like I'm planning to go up the Cape later in the year, I'll remove the jerry can, I'll put the thread in and I'll take me extra spare. So for trips like that, um, yeah, perfect. You can sort of customize it to how you want. Ladder on the back, that folds down. This is different from my old package. They've just got like um, sort of interference fit laser cut plastic hinges now. So when you want to get the ladder off, you just go bang, bang. And then the same down the bottom, it just locks in like that. Pretty good, less moving parts, less things to go wrong. And then nice and solid, you can just climb up here and get into your rooftop tent. Now I also, I'll show you when I open the canopy, I carry a, um, an extendable ladder from the Bush Company because um, if I've got my 270 awning out, I can't really use this ladder to access my um, rooftop tent. All right, while we're at the back, I'll show you this. The drawer's the same, it's just a little bit different in dimensions. Uh, it used to have a stiffening bar down the middle, which um, sort of took up a bit of space. Now they've changed the design so the strength is in the underside of it and you get a full depth draw the whole way through. You fit heaps of gear in there. I put my recovery gear, a shovel, some tie down straps, and this is a, like a little electric barbecue I can run off my inverter. It's bloody sick. And a new thing too is now it's got um, 
a lockable hinge here. So it won't go in unless you unlock that. All right, first time driving the 200 with nothing but a tray on it. I'm pretty excited. I know, I love the canopy because it's sick and functional and epic for camping, but this thing's been tuned. Oh, even the brakes feel super touchy because I haven't got 600 kilos up my ass. Anyway, I'm gonna drive it in sports manual and have a bit of a run and see how far she goes. <laughs> oh, mate. It's a freaking rocket ship with a canopy on it. Ooh -wee. You can hear that in the background, that bottles of rum clinking around for the lads from Norworld to say thank you. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we'll keep going around this side. So uh, pretty much the same as the other side, but the internal of the uh, passenger side is a whole lot different with my kitchen. But up top, we've got the 270 awning hanging off the Bush Company. Another toolbox on this side in this one. I have got my tool kit. So I've got an ARB tool roll in there that's just got sockets and spanners and a um, few little items like that I use specifically for this car, the um, oil filter wrench spanner and a few other things, but I always keep that in there locked away so I know I've always got tools with me when I hit the road. Also zip ties, man. Packets of zip ties, always handy. So I keep them in there as well. Swing round, all the same. On this side, you've got um, your connections, so you've got Anderson connections for solar, 12 volt for the Bush Company roof tent, and then you've also got a big Anderson plug. You're probably wondering why there's a big one in there. It's because I have got a kick-ass new Red Arc charger inside, which I'll show you, and it can uh, charge it up to 100 amps. So you need a lot of, um, you need big cable and big connections to run it. And then another water filler down this side, or another water tap, sorry, there you go. Happy days. All right, so I'll open it up and walk you around what's on the inside. You know what? You know what one of the good things about this canopy is? <laughs> I'll have to get the keys to show you. Look up here. Can you see that? <laughs> Can you see that? Ready? Happy days. It's got central locking for the canopy. How good's that? Now I did have it on the last one. The lads have been working on it for a long time and when they finally got the kits together, we sort of modified uh, my old package and put it on so I could test it. And I had it on there for over 12 months and not a drama, so uh, happy. I know they didn't want to release it until they got it fully sorted because you can imagine if you've, um, you put a central locking package on a canopy that does a lot of trips like the Cape, the Gib, the Udnadatta, and the internals of it fail and then you can't get into your canopy, yeah, not a good look. So. Anyway, they've nailed it and I've, um, I've tested it, tried and proven, and uh, I love it. So central locking on the canopy. Only on the canopy doors though, not on the toolboxes, but I don't think you need it. Like, I generally leave these ones, if I, I am going somewhere and I'm worried about it, I'll lock the toolbox ones on their own. Uh, but you know, general running around when you go in the shops and everything, central locking on the canopy doors is gold. So, right oh, here is my kitchen side. So. Uh, I have a 115 litre fridge, or it's 113 litre. It's the new Dometic, they call it an NRX 115. It's their new compressor fridge. It, it's worlds above the old CRX, trust me. It's a heaps better fridge, You've got heaps of space. You've still got a freezer in top, but one of the big functions around this one is you can actually pull that freezer out and the whole thing can be a freezer, or the whole thing can be a fridge. Pretty cool. In beside the fridge here, uh, this is where all the battery management stuff lives. So I can't really see in there, I'll have to show you some overlay footage, but uh, first up we have the Red Vision monitor, which is just inside here. Now that controls all our switching and you can turn your 240 volt, uh, your inverter on over here, turn your lights on and your air compressor on, like that. It tells you your state of charge of your system. So what your battery level's at, how much solar's coming in, or how much DC charge is coming in from the car, and how much power you're using as well, So and time to empty. So it's really good to know all these things when you're out and about, and you know if you need to go for a drive to charge it up, or you need to park in the sun, or you need to stop using your inverter, all those things, uh, it's a bloody good system. That's the Red Vision that does the switching. In beside that, there is a unit called the TVMS Rogue, which sort of controls all your inputs and outputs, and then Beside that, and down here, which is hard to see as well, this is the new Manager Alpha 100. 
So that means it's a 100 amp charger. It can either be AC, DC, and solar. And man, I tell you what, it rips. And that's why I have to have such big cable coming from the alternator to um, the unit, just so you can get the amperage if you want it. So I could actually pull 100 amps, like charge at 100 amps into these batteries while I'm driving. That's pretty mental, eh? Not that I would do that because I'm, I don't want to cook my alternator. I've only got the standard alternator. And when I am towing with the caravan, I have the same manager alpha in the caravan. So I'm not gonna be able to pull 200 amps off this alternator. So I've got them both dialed down to 50. So the best thing about it is it's all adjustable through either the Red Vision, the screen here, you can adjust the settings or through the app. There's like a Red Vision configurator app and another Red Vision app to turn all your switches and stuff on, which is bloody handy. So um, yeah, it's about all I can tell you. And then in behind the fridge and behind this drawer, there is two 200 amp Red Arc batteries. So there's a 400 amp lithium setup in there and I'll show you the inverter on the other side. I'll show you a few extra treats I've got down the side here. So in beside my fridge and the headboard, start from the back. I carry two first aid kits. So I've got like a vehicle one and I also carry the snake bite one as well. So super handy. They just fit in nice and neat down the side there. And then carry an extra radio, just an Oricom handheld. It always stays on charge, so it's good to go. And then that's good for like when you're out bush or if uh, Beck's back and if I'm backing in somewhere and Beck needs a radio or the kids like playing with them, um, always carry a handy one there. And then beside it, if you haven't seen these, these are pretty schmick. These are a um, fire extinguisher. So there you go. They call them a nanoparticle fire extinguisher, which means they don't leave any residue. So like if you, you can spray it around in here, it puts the fire out, you're not gonna leave powder or foam or anything all over everything. Um, yeah, and all you have to do is pull the ring and hit the yellow button and away you go. I'll drop a link in for you for those. They're a, um, I've got a discount for them and I reckon they're bloody handy. I've got one in the car and one in the caravan as well. How good are they? Bang. I'll see if, um, I'll see if I can get my hands on a couple of spares and do a test on a campfire for you and show them. But, they work a treat when you watch the videos. Oh, there's lights up here too. I'll show you them while I'm here. They're color changing and stuff. So you can go from white to orange, keep the bugs away, the orange. It does work. Um, I've tested it. It does work. Um, yeah, what I do, I run an extension lead from my inverter over to this side to a little power adapter. So then when I pull my kitchen out, I can run my inverter or any kettle or anything straight off these two power points here. So uh, new addition for me, have a look at this thing. What do you reckon that is, hey? This is a big pull-out pantry, and it's absolutely epic. So I'll show you. Um, I've never had one before. I got pretty excited when they said, oh yeah, do you want to chuck one of these in? I'm like, oh, let's run with that. So pull it in, it locks in just like the sort of the ladder on the back with the, the plastic um, cutouts, all laser cut. And then you come out here, or CNC routed, I mean, not laser. And then there is your pantry. Great for stuff like spices, sauces, coffee, or packets of tuna, rice, Aeroguard matches. There's a bloody crispy chicken taco kit up the top. Some of these, I carry a lot of campers pantry meals and um, some off-grid meals. They're just like freeze-dried and uh, dehydrated or sort of camping meals. So sort of like now, I've sort of ducked away, not really planning. I haven't got much food. So if you get hungry, you can just boil the kettle up and chuck them in, but how good. All those sort of things that you're always sort of scouting around for in a box or something that's rolling around the back of the canopy, it all stays in there and you've got like this uh, bungee cord that holds it all in. Good. Tell you what, it does not go anywhere, eh? Right? And then you just push back up, drops in there and you can lock it in if you want, but I never bother, it doesn't go anywhere, but you can pull it down to lock it in like this. Bang. Doesn't move. How good. All right, I'll pull my kitchen drawer out and show you this one. This one, it's got two stages. You've got a kitchen table, pulls all the way out with the Norwell Aussie map on it. And then you've got your kitchen drawer. So inside mine, uh, I keep it pretty simple. I just have my induction cooker. So that's a 2000 watt induction cooker, fry pan, a couple of cups, plates, and um, yeah, some dishcloths and whatnot. Sort of add different things in if I'm um, going away for a long time. But that is my kitchen, like so. Yeah, I tell you what, it makes an epic Bundy rum bar. Don't worry about that. A couple of Bundys sitting here looking out at the view. How's the view? Yeah, it's pretty good. 
it's pretty good. All right, we'll put this away and I'll show you something else. So the reason I don't have that drawer fully chocked is because I run this and I'll, I'll have to hang it up to show you, but it's just to navigate the kitchen, buddy. Um, and what I've done, I'll show you where I've put it. I've put the clips on here, screwed it to the fridge mount base and it just hangs over here and that's where I keep my cutlery and stuff. So I'll, I'll get that out and I'll show you that quickly. Have a look at this, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Knives, forks, spoons, cutlery, more, of the, more spices, uh, paper towel down the bottom. Open him up and you can keep knives, bags, disinfectant wipes, uh, dishcloths, all that in there. And um, yeah, so that's why I don't keep the, the kitchen drawer so chockers because I run this thing. I find it super easy to work with. And then you can also hang it off anything. I've hanging it in the boat, hanging it off the awning in your caravan. So you can just move it around. Bloody good thing. And then in the very back here, I keep um, my chairs, my fire pit, my shower on the other side, I'll show you. Um, now this used to be longer, right? If you remember the old package, I had the outboard slide in the back. So now that it's a, um, it's a shorter package, you can see the tray base there. Uh, this space is smaller because I don't need an outboard. So it fits jerry cans, 30 packs of beer, and my chairs and fire pit, nice and easy. And this is the driver's side. Oh, I've locked it, hang on. This is the work side, I reckon. Still plenty of storage, but I keep on my work in here. In here. Um, at the back here, you'll see this is my shower. I carry a 12 volt shower, so all I have to do is plug this in to 12 volts. It's just a jerry can, and it's got an internal pump, and that starts pumping. So I just stand over here and have a shower. And then all my water tank water, I can either refill the shower or use that for washing hands and feet and dishes and that sort of thing. So it's handy to have heaps of water when you're out and about. And then up the top, we have a full length shelf, which is also removable or movable, where you can get different ones. So you can run a shorter one, half one, where you can take it out altogether. In here, that's my ladder, the extendable telescopic ladder that goes up. I run that up this side to the tent. So if I have the awning out, I can put the ladder up this side. Um, swing in here, this is my Starlink. Got a nice Starlink bag there. I carry that pretty much everywhere because I, oh, if I'm out and about, I just like having internet and get some work done while I'm on the road. My camera bag, and then, um, yeah, I've still got plenty of space. So when we do go away, I've got lots of space to throw extra boxes and food and grog and all that. And then up here, this is pretty cool. So this is the ARB dual compressor up the top here. Norweld have made this custom bracket um, to fit the whole setup. And you've got the tank here, and then you've got the dual compressor, then you've got the airbag man wireless control. So you can flick this switch on here. That powers up the compressor and starts filling the tank. And then you've got this part of the airbag man control system for the airbags in the back. It's just a remote control. You press top ones are up, the bottom ones are down, left and right. It's your bag, your air up and down. That means you don't have to, um, oh, I'll show you quickly. Press the button, up she goes. Watch the gauge up there. Down she goes. Uh, yeah, that means you don't have to run your airline out to like manual inflation valves on the back and stuff. I've still got the manual inflation valves in case the compressor ever fails or something, but you never have to use them. And then you can just grab this up and down. Super handy, I love it. And then um, what do we got? Inverter. This is the Red Arc RS3. It's a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now that is plenty big enough to run everything that I want to use. So like the 2000 watt induction cooker, my battery chargers. Um, I can even plug the car straight into the caravan and charge those batteries up if I want. This is a premium package for Norweld. So Norweld uh, Auto Aleckis do all this wiring, all right? So from the other side right through all across the headboard, it's all pre-wired across the back with fuses and breakers and all the good stuff. And I can tell you from, I've had a Norweld canopy for six years. Uh, I've never blown a fuse, hey, with a battery package. So the way it's done is just primo, and you know that when you want to use it, it's going to work. And then one of my own little tricks here is just, um, it's got 12 volt Siggy and then USB points down here, and I plug my um, GoPro battery chargers into them and just stick them to the wall, and then that way I can always have extra GoPro batteries on charge. That's just a little hack that I use anyway. Uh, righto. Another light up here on this side, and then this one is a full length lockable drawer. I'll open it up and show you inside. Nice and deep, heaps of space. And in mine, I've just got extra stuff like a jump start pack, um, some AeroGuard, 
fly nets, um, battery gear. Like I said, it's mainly work stuff this side. So a tripod, different GoPro accessories and stuff, uh, a heap of charges and cords, uh, camera cleaning stuff, a drone. Anyway, you can use it. I'm sure you could utilize it a lot better than I do, but it suits my purpose because it's in there, it's secure, it's lockable, and I know where everything is. So if I need a certain piece of kit, I know it's in this drawer. Works well for me. I suppose I forgot to tell you up here on this shelf, I just keep um, the things that fit really well are these ARB storage cases, the cargo gear ones. So yeah, just keep extra food and stuff in that one. Up here I've got my air hoses and, um, and uh, what else? I've got my air hoses and digital gauge. So that goes up there. It's just good having like everything's got a spot, you know? So if you want it, you know where it is. You know it's not going to be broken or busted or flying around the canopy. It all sits in its own little spot and it makes everything easy. I like being organised, or somewhat, anyway. <laughs> and how's my fridge organiser? You like that one? Hey, I was looking at getting them online and they're bloody, people want so much money for them. And I was in getting um, oil and filters to do a service at Supercheap and Supercheap had got them for like 59 bucks. So. Looks pretty good quality to me. I just screwed it straight to the front of my fridge. Like it's never going to come off. So a couple of stainless self tappers straight in the front there. It does come with um, sticky stuff on the back, like sticky Velcro. You can put it on, but oh, oh, I, like, I put a lot of weight in it. So I just screw the damn thing straight on. But there you go. Save yourself a few quid. So what I'll do now, I'll, um, I'll snap in some footage of taking this thing off at home with the jack and legs and showing you what it's like just as a tray based ute. So all you gotta do is put these jack and legs in. One goes in each corner of the canopy. You got either wind on handles, or you can use an impact gun to wind them up or a drill. But I've got four of these. Once I get all them in, there's six bolts that hold the canopy down to the tray, undo a few electrical connections on the headboard, and we're good to go. We wind them up and drive out. So the legs are jacked up, you can see under here, there's like a 20, 30 mil gap all the way underneath the tray base. And then we should be able to just drive out nice and slowly now. Look at that. That took all of about, I don't know, two minutes. And that's how you take it off, about five minutes work. Sweet, let's give you a quick look at this ute now that it's a ute, hey? <laughs> it's a totally different looking rig, eh? It looks like it looks sick. I love it. Now, it's um, for me now that we're not on the road full time too, it's super functional. So I can come up the shed here and I used it the other day to cut down a heap of trees, use the winch, pull them out, stack the ute full of sticks and trees and stuff and then go and have a big burn pile. So super handy having a ute. And I tell you what, it's just nice to drive. It hoots around, uh, it's comfy, it's smooth, it's got heaps more go, the brakes work, the steering's lighter, it's pretty crazy, but um, it looks sick, that's the best part of it, and it's fully functional, but let's give you a quick look at what entails turning it into a ute. So I just showed you quickly how to take it off, just with the jack and legs and a few bolts, and now I've just got some sideboards. So, put all this stainless hardware, um, you take the back one off, like so, folding down, and then you just slide them off. They've got like these Teflon inserts on these stainless um, sort of hinges. They all slide on there, and then the front ones go on the same. They're just on a hinge here as well. Goes onto a clip on the headboard. Down she goes. And then yeah, all three of them come off and you can scoot around with the flat tray like that as well if you want. Now this, um, the rubber comes from Norweld, so before I put the canopy back on, you rip this off, take the, the rubber off, and then yeah, you just slide him straight back on. And you can see here all the nut certs in this tray base. So this is what, um, because the checker plate is now gone off the side of these tray bases and the rope rails, there is no tie down points now for when you run it as a ute, okay? So what you can do is run these eye bolts in all these different positions. You just unscrew them, run an eye bolt wherever you want for whatever you want to tie down. I'm gonna rip, um, 
I'll rip these sideboards off and I'm going to put the canopy back on now. So I'll show you what it looks like just as a tray base. It looks tougher again. I'll give you a closer look at this too. Now I've talked about it um, with the canopy on, but you can really see that profile of that headboard there now with the flat side here and the curved front on it. And also, if you look in behind there, you can see it's like an extrusion. Yeah, so it's sort of hollow as well, like a bit of an eye beam. And then this stuff all bolts to it. So pretty unique, eh? I, um, I like it and it looks bloody good. It looks so bloody good. Yeah, how tough does that look? That's unreal, isn't it? Back to old flatbed. Let's go and throw the box back on. All right, well, that's a quick look at my new Elite Train Canopy package, mate. Bit shorter, it's a jack off, a few different features inside, what I pack in it and all that. Hope you got a little bit of info out of it. And um, if you've got any questions, let me know. Happy to help you. Till next time, safe travels and um, we'll see you out on the road somewhere.